I had the extreme fortune of borrowing a copy of The Last Unicorn, The Lost Version. If you've never heard of it, I'm not surprised. It's the original, incomplete story for the beloved book, and it was limited to 1,000 signed copies when it released in 2006. Amazon advertises it as an audiobook on Kindle Direct and Audible, but as far as I can tell, they are not offering the lost version. It's just the regular book. There's also supposedly a reprinting of the story from a 2016 book called The First Last Unicorn and Other Beginnings, but it's unavailable on Amazon with no reviews and none for sale in the used section, so it appears to have been an abandoned publication that never actually hit the shelves. So I am here today to tell you all about this small, unfinished book because it's so neat and different and interesting that I feel like it needs to be shared more than it has been. And, of course, so I can have others to share in the discussion with me. The introduction to the unicorn's forest seems to be the same, or at least similar enough that you wouldn't notice many differences. But it doesn't take long before the unicorn has to get fired up because she smells a dragon nearby. Apparently, according to the Lost version, ever since the first unicorn stepped into a world full of dragons, they've hated each other and must always fight to the death when they cross paths. This is really interesting because it hints at dating the birth of unicorns, not in terms of years, but that they appeared long after dragons. Otherwise, the world wouldn't have been full of dragons when unicorns showed up from wherever they came from. Now, while the last unicorn has a very medieval feel to it, the lost version actually fixates on the issue of modernity ruining everything. So, when the unicorn faces the dragon and challenges him to fight, she's disarmed by the fact that the dragon won't stop crying. The unicorn then realizes that the dragon is all torn up, and the dragon tells her about all the horrors of modern-day city living. Well, modern for 1962, when the draft was being written, anyways. The dragon even has this anecdote about going into the city and getting into trouble with the police because they insisted that he was a vehicle without a license. After he vents for a while, the unicorn asks if the dragon has seen any others like herself, and he says he hasn't, that they've all vanished. The dragon has a cousin who actually believes that the newfangled city air is actually shrinking the dragons away until they become nothing, but the unicorns have just fallen off the face of the earth. So the unicorn ultimately leaves the forest and begins the quest for her people. The unicorn still runs across the man who tries to catch her and offends her by calling her a horse. But in the lost version, he has a wife and we're told his name is Martin. There's also a little boy that the unicorn finds in the forest. The unicorn thinks he's only a few years old and he can see her horn and understand her. There's no clarification offered for why that happens, but I imagine it has to be because the boy was so young and pure. Then the butterfly wanders by and stays with the unicorn all day. Most of his dialogue sounded the same to me, although he does have a lot more random sentences thrown in as well. At one point he asks for the bathroom like he's some kind of guy at a grocery store. But once the butterfly starts spilling what he knows about unicorns, he says, They passed through all the cities long ago, and the black road ran close behind them and covered their footprints. Obviously, the original intent for the unicorns being missing was going to be much darker than an evil king holding them all captive. And I guarantee you I'm going to be laying awake for at least a few nights wondering what was going to happen to the unicorns in this version. While there were some similarities up until now with the original book, the lost version suddenly shifts into a much different tale when the unicorn takes on a demon who has been freshly banned from hell. His name is Azazel, or at least I read it as Azazel, A-Z-A-Z-E-L. And he's this humanoid figure with horns and a second extremely long neck with a goat head attached to it. The goat head is named Webster, and his endless troublemaking is what got the demons thrown out of hell. I think they're demons, plural. I'm not really sure. It's one body, two heads. How do you count that? Oh, and hell is apparently a very nice place these days. They've put out the fires, cleaned it up. A lot of the demons have shaved down their horns. 
And people have to choose to go there based on where they sell their soul or where they think they belong at their time of death. The Lost Version doesn't fully explain the whole depths of this hell, but it's very interesting. On the way into exile, the odd demon snatched up a coal from hell, and their entire goal in this book is to find a new location to start a hell sister location. And apparently it only takes this single coal to accomplish this. That's all they need. Well, besides a physical place to start the new hell. It's a really bizarre yet very intriguing premise. I've never heard anything like this myself. I also really enjoyed the insanity and bickering that came about from Webster's character. Even though I adore The Last Unicorn in its final form, I think some more levity in that story wouldn't have hurt anything either. Azazel also works himself into a rant that mentions how unicorns predate hell, and he doesn't understand where unicorns came from or where they ended up after they died. I mean, I've never thought about it, but that's an interesting question to ponder over now that it's been presented. The unicorn in the lost version also has a strange fixation on virgins. The final draft of the last unicorn makes no real mention as to why unicorns came to virgins, just that it was part of an old custom and unicorns would sometimes partake in it if they felt like it. But in the lost version, the unicorn describes being able to smell virgins, and she says that unicorns are the protector of virgins. In fact, unicorns are so highly tuned into virgins that they can tell when someone loses their virginity. A little TMI, but okay. The unicorn even tells Azazel that only virgins have ever ridden her, and only virgins ever will. To which Azazel replies, well, I'm technically a virgin. I am telling you, the dialogue in this book is so wonderful. <laughs> also, the unicorn complains that the modern day virgins have an additional smell now that she can't figure out. The Lost Version also offers a lot of talk about powers fading away. Azazel has lost almost all forms of his magic. Azazel says that demons have fewer powers in the New World, but unicorns have none. And it is repeatedly brought up that the unicorn has dwindling abilities and a horn that's losing its light. Which may actually be why most humans can't understand her or see her anymore. The incomplete draft winds down with demons tracking them to take the coal back. But other than a few signs that demons are onto them, like a young girl harassing Azazel, it's all buildup that never gets to a head. It's repeated over and over again that the unicorn hates cities, and they're going towards a huge city, one that's too large to walk around, but we never get there to know what happens. I get the impression that, had the book continued, Azazel would have readily been able to create the sequel to Hell in that city. But, as for the rest of the story, and where the other unicorns went in this rendition, I'm afraid that's going to forever remain a mystery. There was a hint or two that makes me think the unicorns weren't going to be rescued at the end of this book, though. Not only does the dragon mention the idea that unicorns have completely vanished, and Azazel commented on their loss of power, but the unicorn herself has a small meltdown. Briefly, the unicorn scares herself by thinking about turning to stone, and she reacts to the notion as if it's a real possibility. So I wonder if all the fluster and confusion of the modern world upset the unicorns into dying of their own accord. Like, no one took them, they aren't hiding away, they just faded off into death, or changed into statues, because they saw there was no place left for them in the new version of the world. Unicorns couldn't adapt to the modern era, and the modern era saved no place in their world for unicorns to fit into. So the unicorns all passed on just as oddly as they arrived. I did just finish the lost version, so I haven't had much chance to sit on the information and debate it over in my mind, but I always love it when the comments turn into a think tank. So, if you lovelies have any thoughts, I welcome your positive and constructive posts. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed enough to like, subscribe, and share this video. I've also got a lot of other videos on my channel that you are fully encouraged to go check out. Plus, you can find me on Facebook at Say Halo Goodbye, which is my gamer tag, or Twitter at the underscore family.